folks may be tired to see His Majesty's face. You know, the evil doers. They're tired to see His Majesty's face, Kadamawi, Haile Selassie's face, but you can't get Jah out of the true human race. And so therefore we must speak of him. Now, Nibiru, let's talk about Nibiru. Right? Is Nibiru the tenth planet? Is it planet X? Is it the black planet? But they're trying to deceive us by calling it a small dwarf star, right? Or a brown, actually. Notice that they call it not the black, but actually brown. You know, like when some folks say, I'm not black, literally black, I'm brown. Is this the same sort of deception they are doing as above, so below? As below, so above? So what is Planet X? Really, Planet X, so-called, really it should be Planet XI, Planet 11, because, you know, first they call it the 12th planet, so Zachariah Sitchin may job bless and rest his soul, but Zachariah Sitchin of the Anunnaki and Sumerian um, archaeology, archives, ancient records, and, and, and research, and a, a fair amount of speculation, but he did point out some important facts that we need to put within the, the context of what we're speaking of here. So, what is, what, where, when, why, planet X, Nibiru? Now, Nibiru has a meaning in the Afro-Semitic or the Afro-Semitic language known as Gu'uz. Now, why is Gu'uz? Why is the Agazi? Why is the Gu'uz? Why is the Gu'uz so very important? Well, to get into that, that's to get into a whole um, linguistic lesson, and it's unfortunate because Gu'uz, or ancient Ethiopic, is not even taught to the modern Ethiopians. You remember the word says that the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. That's why reading your Bibles, Ethiopia is mentioned in the very beginning and the connection with the Garden of God. Right? But today, you look at the Ethiopians, people mocking and jesting and looking at whether the famine uh, pictures, the real or the faux famine. You know, it was a faux famine during the time of his match. That was all a part of uh, political expediency. You can call that the crucifixion of the King of Kings, as was the crucifixion of the Lord of Lords. What they did to the Geatomacy or to the Lord. Lord Messiah, Yeshua, right, the suffering Savior, so they did to the Father, the King of Kings, Kedemawi, Haile Selassie. But I'm not going to argue with you on theology right now, because now we're talking about, what, astronomy? Right now we're talking about cosmology. So let's talk about this while we have time to talk about it. What is this Planet X really about? Is it Planet X? Is it a brown dwarf star? And I want you to see the connection, right? There's a connection with the King of Kings. There's a connection with the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Sometimes they say, well, it's it's like a scorpion. Other times it's like a it's like a dragon. Other times it's like a, a lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah. You know how the enemy, the adversary, the antichrist is compared to a roaring lion that seeks who he may devour. That's our enemy. But the lion of the tribe of Judah, the book of the seven seals, the king of kings of Ethiopia, Christ in his kingly character, Melchizedek, the king of righteousness. Right? What do we mean by that? The testimony of His Majesty, truly a, a testimony, the sign and the seal that has been missed. It said that they would miss Him, right? That He would come as a thief in the night. So how poetical, scriptural, biblical, prophetical it is that most of the world regards Hila Selassie with enmity, with distrust, with, with an evil mind, because the whole world has been deceived, right, by that old-time dragon, right? And so it says, heavens rejoice, 
But woe to you who dwell on the earth. Now, we can deal with this in a historical perspective, but we want to touch on the black planet. Right, the black planet, that's an object of what we want to talk about here in 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 connection with Nibiru. Right? In connection with Nibiru. Let's see if we can bring this if we can open this up right here. What we want to show you right here is um the planets. Right? The planets as well this is actually Noah Noch's portion. So let's open Noah's Ark right there. Right? While Noah's Ark is uh, preparing, right, Noah's Ark. You see, most people are in ignorance, ignorance bark. You understand? Ignorance bark. They, they're just barking out ignorance, lies, assumption. Well, they read it here and there, but they didn't find out the truth for themselves. We are to know the truth, and the truth sets us free. Whom the Son has freed is free indeed. So, this planet, is it the 10th planet, right? Is it the 12th planet? Is it the black planet? Is it a um, a brown, you know, it's almost comical how they just palm that one off on the people, right? They say a brown dwarf star. Whatever does a brown dwarf star, whatever does that mean? Let's just, let me find this right here, and this might be able to better give you a kind of a visual, right, a visual of what we are speaking of right here, right, if I can find this, I'm going through this at a lively pace because I give thanks for those who are watching this, and I want to communicate something that where folks say, I don't believe that's true, and they go do their own research, and then they find themselves doing what um, I'm doing here. You just got to put it out. You know what I'm saying? You just got to share it with others because you begin to recognize how important it is since uh, here it goes right here. So let's bring this open right here. Okay, let's bring this open like that and let us move Noah's Ark, right? <laughs> Noah's Ark, the, what do they call it, the Ararat Anomaly? Oops. Okay, so here we go right here. This right here, some will call this the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah. As Christ says, those who can receive, right? You know, those who can receive, those who can hear what the Spirit saith to the churches, right? But outside of what the Kana measures is given to the nations, the Gentiles, the dogs, right? But we have to measure that which is within the tabernacle. So let's look at this tree of life right here. Now, how many planets? Now, usually on the Kabbalah, right, what's known as the so-called Jewish today Kabbalah, this one here, you see that Saturn is often left out. So what we have, let's count it from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right? Now, this ten, right, this ten, let's count it one more time. 10, but we didn't count this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's 11. Have you noticed they say, is it the 12th planet? The 12th planet, Zachariah Sitchin, the Anunnaki, right? Bread and bread human beings. Well, that's, uh, that is inaccurate. Bread a certain species. Right, bred a certain species, a certain gene, a certain gene pool. Right, that's why when they talk about those who are the 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 one percent, the ninety nine percent, the one percent, isn't that interesting? That one percent is ruling ninety nine percent. They must get a little help from their friends or from their 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 breeders. Right? But the point is, they say 12th planet or 10th planet. How have they skipped over the 11th planet? Right? Or what would be in the space of the 11th planet? Could you really consider the moon a planet? Is the moon really considered a planet planet? That's, that's a question right there. They said Pluto is no longer a planet. So are they trying to change... Uh, um, laws and times, they're saying Pluto is not really a real planet because of its size or so forth and so on. But notice they say Nibiru. Now Nibiru, 
right, by definition, right, has an important meaning in that language of the first place mentioned in the Bible, Ethiopia, which today on the all socioeconomic indicators and so forth and so on is one of the last nations, right? They say very poor nation. Oh, Ethiopia is so poor. And by Ethiopia extension, we're saying black people. Now, notice how they call the planet at first. At first they call it a planet. Now they call it a star. There's a big difference between a star, right, and a planet. There's a big difference between a black planet. You remember the um, public enemy? My public enemy basically spoke about what? Public enemy spoke about fear of a black planet. So after they called it a black planet, immediately they said, we got to change that name. Why? Because black folks, some black folks picked up on that and said, how interesting, they're afraid of black people here, and they're afraid of a black planet out there. They're just afraid of the, afraid of the black, right? So quickly they changed the name from uh, black planet, right, to brown dwarf, brown dwarf star, right? Okay. Then they said, well, it's the 10th planet, or it's the 12th planet, but what do they miss? So if you look at this right here, it has the moon definitely is not a foundation, right? The moon is definitely not a foundation, but let's just take it as, as they have it right here, right, as they have it right here. We counted 11, right? They automatically said 12th planet. Then they went from 12th planet to uh, 10th planet, and now everybody calls it Planet X. We say that this particular planet should not be considered Planet X. This particular planet, which we will name the God Planet, right, should be considered Planet XI. And its original name, right, um, the Black Planet, or more correctly, the God planet, should be recognized. Now, when we speak about Nibiru, right, Nebere, Nebere in Ethiopic, in Ge'ez, means to sit or to be seated or to be enthroned. When we say Nebiru, we're speaking of a plural, right, a plural. Remember, it's almost like when Christ said, I and the Father is one. And Nibiru, what's called Nibiru or planet XI, represents the God planet, represents the judgment planet, represents the great destroyer of Babylon planet. And it's not just a ball rolling around there. It, is, it has intelligence. It has divine intelligence. More to come.